بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دا کورس آف ہسٹری آف انگلش لٹریچر نیو کلاسکس ٹو ڈیٹ دا ٹاپک آف ٹو ڈیز لیکچر از ڈاکٹر سیمیول جانسن آئی ایم یور ٹیچر محمد آصف خان لیکچرر ڈپارٹمنٹ آف انگلش گوہاٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی ڈسکشن ایجنڈا فار دس کلاس از دیٹ فرسٹ آف آل آئی ول ریوائز the introduction of 18th century which we studied in the last lecture and then i will move uh, towards uh, the journal introduction of age of uh, johnson and uh, then i will uh, give you the proper introduction of dr samuel johnson we will also study the contribution of uh, this uh, literary giant uh, in the history of english literature and uh, Here we will also discuss uh, the literary club that was uh, established by Dr. Samuel Johnson. In the end of uh, this lecture, I will give you a brief uh, know-how of uh, some of the important literary works of uh, Dr. Johnson. And uh, I think uh, it will give you overall understanding of uh, this uh, personality. So starting uh, from uh, the introduction of uh, 18th century literature as we studied uh, in the last class that we can divide 18th century literature into two distinct periods and uh, these periods are age of pope and age of dr johnson as i already told you that uh, these two are the most prominent personalities of literature of uh, England and we see because of this prominence these parts of uh, the century were named uh, accordingly and we see that uh, from 1700 to 1745 this time period is named as age of pope and uh, after death of uh, Alexander Pope we see that from 1745 to 1785 this very time period is named as age of uh, dr samuel johnson age of dr samuel johnson it is uh, basically the later half of 18th century and uh, we see that uh, johnson is uh, that man who was dominating the literature of that part of the century johnson died in uh, 1784 it was uh, actually that time when we see that uh, there was uh, a decline in the classical spirit of uh, english literature and on the other hand we see the rise or the beginning of uh, the romantic spirit so we can say that uh, the age of johnson is that very time where classical spirit was uh, on its decline and uh, it gave place to the romantic spirit so officially we see that romantic age started in 1798 this is uh, that very year when we see that uh, lyrical ballads was uh, published that was uh, a collaborative uh, effort of uh, william wordsworth and st coleridge and uh, from that very date we normally declare that uh, this is the beginning of uh, official beginning of romantic age but uh, some of the precursors were very much visible in the age of uh, johnson and uh, we see that uh, the classical spirit was uh, on its decline in the age of johnson so in the age of johnson we see clear signs of uh, revolt uh, against uh, the classical spirit and that very revolt was in favor of romantic spirit so this uh, change or this uh, revolt was very clearly visible in the field of poetry we can easily notice uh, this very thing in the in the poetry of age of johnson why it is like this because we see that most of the poets who belong to age of johnson they were experimenting with their poetic form and uh, they were trying to include uh, imaginative ideas 
and uh, there were many many precursors uh, of uh, the romantic revival that were visible there in their poetry so for that reason we see that age of uh, johnson is also named as age of romantic revival because we see that uh, signs and uh, signals and symbols of uh, romantic uh, rebirth were visible in the poetry of uh, this very time period this time period is also named as age of uh, transition in english literature because uh, there was a continuous struggle between that old and new and here we see that uh, poets were trying to free themselves from that uh, pressure of uh, imitating the classic writers so this age is uh, age of romantic revival age of transition and uh, one another name which is uh, most of the time we see that the main characteristic of uh, the romantic writers that they experiment uh, with their works so this age is also known as age of experiment so age of johnson is that age where we see clear signs of revolt and uh, there is a, a beginning of uh, the romantic revival for that reason we see that uh, this age is also referred as age of romantic revival age of transition or age of experiment now let's move uh, towards the introduction of uh, this very important character of uh, literary history dr samuel johnson often referred as dr johnson his date of birth uh, is uh, 18 september 1709 and he was uh, born in leechfield uh, staffordshire his date of birth is 13 december 1784 so these are the two important dates born on 18 september 1709 and died on 13 december 1785 and uh, he is uh, the man who dominated uh, the world of letters to 30 years between 1745 to 1785 and uh, the later half of 18th century is uh, named as age of johnson basically he attended uh, pembroke college of oxford but uh, he studied uh, just for one year and because of lack of funds uh, or or lack of money he was forced to leave the college so later on he completed his education and uh, after working as a teacher he moved to london where he began to write for magazines so this is uh, dr johnson's uh, educational background but he is very prolific personality and uh, we see that uh, he not only was a poet uh, or a writer we see that his contribution is there in number of fields so when we look at the contribution we see that uh, he had a long lasting contribution to english literature and he contributed in the field of poetry in the field of drama he was also an essayist a moralist he was uh, one of uh, the prominent uh, literary critics of his time and even now his criticism is uh, considered most authentic one he was a biographer an editor lexicographer and we see that uh, the authentic uh, dictionary which he has created has its impact up till present world he was also a pamphleteer and uh, he he also wrote uh, narratives travel narratives and he was a travel narrative writer also a translator and you see that uh, he contributed in all these field and uh, have that uh, impact that uh, up till present world of literature people are commemorating his uh, contributions now let's uh, see that uh, his contribution in detail as a poet the prominent writings of uh, dr samuel johnson are uh, london and uh, the vanity of human wishes as a playwright uh, his contribution is uh, uh, the irene 
and uh, he also wrote uh, philosophical novella and uh, the history of uh, Rasselas, uh, who was uh, the prince of Abyssinia. Uh, he has greatly contributed uh, as an essayist, and we see that uh, he wrote a series of essays, like in Rambler, he was there. He also contributed in The Idler, that was a weekly series of essays. And he also wrote uh, in uh, Adventurer, and it was also a series uh, of essays. So you see that uh, he has uh, multiple talents, and he was uh, contributing in all these fields. As a biographer, we see two important works, Life of Mr. Richard Savage, and uh, another important work about which I will tell you in detail in the end of this very lecture, Lives of the Most Eminent English Poets. As an editor, he served uh, in uh, the Gentleman's Magazine. He also edited uh, the Literary Magazine or the Universal Review. The plays of uh, William Shakespeare was uh, also edited by Dr. Samuel Johnson. As a lexiographer, his contribution, most important one, is a dictionary of uh, English language that was published in 1755. As a pamphleteer, we see that uh, he contributed uh, and uh, he published uh, uh, pamphlets uh, like uh, A False Alarm, that is a political pamphlet. And then we see that uh, the thoughts on the late transactions respecting Falklands Islands and the Patriot. These are some of the pamphlets which uh, were being uh, written by Dr. Samuel Johnson. He also wrote a travel narrative, and uh, we see that uh, the important travel narrative was uh, a journey to the western islands of Scotland. That is his uh, contribution in the field of travel narrative. He also translated Messiah, and uh, this is uh, basically a translation into Latin, and uh, here he translated uh, Alexander Pope's Messiah into Latin. So you just imagine that in how many fields he contributed and uh, starting from uh, the poetry where he has given us uh, London and the vanity of human wishes as a playwright, the irony. He, uh, also, he has also written a novella, philosophical novella. And then we have the history of uh, Rasselas, Prince of Abyssinia. As an essay, he, he has written in The Rambler, The Idler, The Adventurer, and uh, he is also a biographer, and uh, two important works, The Life of Mr. Richard Savage and Lives of the Most uh, Eminent English Poets. He edited a number of magazines. He was also a lexiographer, a pamphleteer, and uh, a travel narrative writer, and he also translated a uh, number of works. So this is his journal contribution. He also founded a literary club in London, and it was a London dining club that was actually founded in February 1764. And the founder of this very club is Dr. Samuel Johnson. You just imagine that the list of the members, they are from not only all fields of knowledge, but also from all walks of life. People were there in uh, this very club, and this shows uh, that how much productive this club would be. And uh, you can imagine that uh, how this assembly or this gathering might have contributed in the grooming of the people who were taking part uh, in the meetings or in the in the gatherings of this very club. So I will give you the list of the members. We see that the members of uh, Johnson's Literary Club included the writers like uh, Goldsmith and Boswell. And uh, we, we also find here the statements like uh, C.J. Fox and uh, dramatists like Sheridan was there and uh, the historian uh, like Gibbon was there, one of the prominent uh, historian of uh, the 18th century, not only 18th century, but he has that long-lasting impact on the writing style of the history. And uh, then we have the painters like uh, Renault and the musician like Bernie, 
and uh, the naturalists like Banks and uh, the philosopher and economist like Adam Smith was there in that very club and uh, philosopher po politician like uh, Edmund Burke was there and we also have uh, the orientalist uh, William Johns on the membership of the club of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson and uh, we also find here the actor David Garrick who was also a student of Dr. Samuel Johnson. So from all walks of the life, writers were there, statements were there, dramatists, historians, uh, painters, musicians, naturalists, philosophers, economists, politicians, orientalists, actors, people from all walks of the life uh, were the members of this very worthy club. So it proves uh, not only the authenticity of this club, but also it gives us uh, the utility of uh, the club in the grooming of uh, different people. Now let's move uh, towards uh, the important literary works of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson. And uh, I will start from the important poem of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson. And this poem is uh, London. It is a poem by Dr. Samuel Johnson. And uh, this very poem was uh, produced uh, shortly after he moved to London and uh, it was written in 1738. It is uh, his first major published work and uh, this uh, poem comprises of 263 lines and it is uh, basically imitation of uh, Jovenel's uh, satire. As we already know that uh, the writers of 18th century, they were imitating or they were copying ancient Greeks and uh, Roman writers. Here again we see that Dr. Samuel Johnson is also following that very tradition and he is imitating Jovenel satires. So Johnson imitated Jovenel because uh, of his uh, fondness for the Roman poet. And because he was attached to that very person, that poet, Jovenel, and uh, because of his fondness, because of his love of that poet, he is uh, imitating that very important personality of the Roman time period. And uh, he is not only following a uh, Roman poet, he is following the tradition of 18th century, trend of uh, the classical poets. So... Basically, he is following the 18th century tradition or he is following the, the, the pattern or uh, the popular way of that very time period. So it is uh, expressed by a character of uh, Thales as uh, he decides to leave London for Wales. So here again, he is uh, using that uh, very structure or that very pattern that was there in the juveniles and he is using that very setting and then describes his own story. So London is very important poem and it was published in 1738 comprises of 263 lines very traditional to the 18th century literature because here again we see that he is imitating on the ancient Romans now let's move towards another important literary work and uh, this is a poem the vanity of human wishes and this very poem was published on 9th january 1749 this poem has 368 lines and uh, this is written in closed heroic couplet again we see that uh, the form or the pattern in this very poem is of uh, juvenile style and uh, it is uh, again that uh, popular tradition and he is following that tradition in this very poem and uh, he has written this very poem on juvenile satire form. The subject of uh, this poem is that uh, it focuses on human futility or humanity's quest after greatness like uh, juvenile but uh, in the end we see that the poet concludes that Christian values are important to living properly. So vanity of human wishes is uh, the topic and uh, basically he is discussing that uh, how the pride 
or conceit or arrogance or egotism that uh, uh, leads uh, human beings uh, astray from the right path. So this is uh, the subject uh, of this uh, poem, whereas uh, in form we see that he has copied the juvenal style. Now let's move uh, towards uh, another important work, and this is uh, the only play of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson. The name of this play is Irene, and we see that uh, this very play was written between 1726 and 1749. It is basically a new classical tragedy, and uh, this very play was considered as uh, the greatest failure of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson, but commercially it was a great hit, and it earned Johnson more money than anything else he had written up to that point. So it was a commercial hit. It really earned a lot for Dr. Samuel Johnson, and uh, commercial uh, success was there, but its uh, literary characteristics, its uh, literary contribution, that is not of that level, and uh, it is often considered as uh, his greatest failure, and we see that uh, it does not match the caliber of Dr. Samuel Johnson. The story of this play is that uh, Sultan Mahmud, uh, the conqueror of Constantinople, who defeated uh, the Byzantine Empire in 1453 that resulted into the fall of Constantinople. We see that in that uh, very event, uh, he captures uh, a Greek Christian, Irene, and he decided to take her as his mistress. And while pursuing her romantically, he ignores his duties as a monarch. So the play is... Uh, set in uh, the Turkish setting and uh, we see that uh, here he is painting uh, Sultan Mehmet, uh, the Ottoman Emperor and uh, soon we see that the kingdom is falling apart from neglects and the subjects begins to rot against uh, Sultan Mehmet. So Johnson alters the real story to emphasize the theme of Irene's temptation. And uh, here we see that uh, Mehmet offers Irene a deal that if she becomes a Muslim, he will preserve her life and give her power at his court. So this is uh, the twist here. And we see that in the end of this play, Mehmet kills uh, Irene to prove his dedication to his people because we see that his uh, subjects were writing against him and his kingdom was falling apart because of uh, neglecting the subjects. So he killed Irene to prove his dedication to his country and to his people. So that is uh, his uh, play, the only play of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson, but it is one of the important works which I want to mention here. Another important work, a dictionary, because uh, I already told you that uh, Johnson has a great contribution as a lexiographer. We see that he published uh, this very uh, dictionary, a dictionary of English language, on 15th April 1755. Initially, it was uh, published uh, as uh, Johnson's Dictionary, and uh, it is one of the most influential dictionaries in the history of uh, English language, because uh, there was... Uh, great dissatisfaction with the, the prevailing dictionaries of that time period. And uh, we see that uh, in June 1746, a group of uh, London booksellers, they contacted Johnson to write a dictionary. And uh, it took uh, seven years of Dr. Samuel Johnson to complete this uh, masterpiece. And though he had claimed that he could finish it in three years, actually it was his initial claim, but because of uh, the magnanimity of the work, because uh, we see in this work Johnson defined more than 40,000 words in the dictionary. So this is uh, that special thing, and we see that uh, it took seven years to complete uh, that uh, work. It uh, also shows his... Uh, devotion, that uh, how he contributed uh, 
and how he devoted himself uh, to the work and we find more than 40000 words in this dictionary and uh, johnson defined these very words so it was very difficult at that time because uh, resources were not available to them in the way now we find these very things to us but uh, it all uh, depends upon the devotion of these big personalities that uh, today we are enjoying such a swift uh, availability of knowledge to us so a dictionary of english language another important contribution of dr samuel johnson we see the plays of william shakespeare edited by dr samuel johnson this was 18th century edition of uh, dramatic works of william shakespeare and uh, samuel johnson and george stevens they edited uh, the 18th century edition of dramatic works of william shakespeare johnson announced his intention to edit shakespeare plays in his uh, article miscellaneous observation on macbeth 1745 and we see that uh, the edition was published in 1765 and in the preface uh, to this very edition of uh, the plays of william shakespeare johnson justifies uh, his uh, that effort and uh, trying to determine the original language of shakespearean plays and he is uh, actually saying that i have uh, tried to maintain that original language of shakespeare though they have edited that uh, very edition and the important thing about uh, this very edited version of the plays of shakespeare is that uh, dr johnson added a few explanatory notes to the various passages and he did this to benefit the reading audience so dr samuel johnson and we find the plays of william shakespeare edited by samuel johnson and george stevenson literary works includes uh, lives of the most eminent english poets because we already referred this very thing in the initial part of this lecture that he was also a biographer and we see that he just recorded the lives of most eminent english poets and this very work was completed between 1779 to 81 it is also known by the shorter title lives of the poets the shorter title of this very book is lives of the poets it comprises of short biographies and uh, the critical appraisals of 52 poets but uh, the most uh, important thing about uh, the lives of the most eminent english poets is that the most of the poets included in this work they were those poets who lived during the 18th century so the special thing is that poets are arranged approximately by date of death in total this book has 52 poets and most of the poets which are included in this book they belong to 18th century and they are arranged approximately by the date of death so important work lives of uh, the most eminent english poets or shorter title is lives of the poets so this is uh, dr samuel johnson's contribution to literature now let's move uh, towards sir uh, dr samuel johnson's prose style and we see that uh, the chief uh, attribute of uh, dr johnson's uh, prose style is that it uh, grew out of his conversational habit and uh, therefore we see it is always uh, very clear forceful and frank uh, again i am telling you that uh, dr samuel johnson was a writer in the classical mode or classical tradition and he is uh, the one who believed that that uh, literature must follow a pre-programmed set of recognized uh, texts and subtexts and uh, that pointed toward the readers uh, accepting the morality of the work and uh, we see that uh, when you are uh, following those uh, pre-programmed uh, set of recognized texts or subtexts actually we are uh, working in that way where we are following the readers accepted uh, uh, standards of morality so he was just following that very thing and uh, he was following uh, those very standard texts uh, because uh, 
these very writings were accepted good and uh, accepted uh, pleasing uh, writings and uh, in this way we see that uh, he was uh, he was appreciating the classical writings of uh, uh, the ancient uh, greeks and romans um, johnson's uh, education in the classics well prepared him to internalize uh, this very notion that literature and art by themselves were incomplete aspect uh, of learners uh, unless that learner could teach others of the benefits of uh, of adding from their close study so if he is unable to properly study the classics he will not be in position to highlight the benefits of these very works to his readers so actually the real understanding of classics and then communicating those benefits or that understanding to the others is very important for dr samuel johnson we see that he was very closely adhering to the rules and regulations of the classics but uh, despite uh, this very closeness we see that he was a uh, very flexible personality and uh, he was uh, not uh, uh, the hardliner and uh, he could appreciate that uh, there were fixed attributes to taste uh, that were universal at least uh, to the upper class of english society but he could also see the differences uh, in the individual reactions because we know that uh, most of the time uh, we are having uh, a common trend or a common taste uh, universal taste towards uh, the appreciation of uh, any form of literature but sometime we have uh, differences uh, and these differences are individual reactions to the taste and that uh, might vary enormously and not always uh, results into that positive way so johnson was quick to attack suddenly on those who posed as an exemplars of uh, decorum and uh, he was uh, not uh, that much uh, hard in uh, just adhering to those classist uh, rules and he was uh, modifying and uh, we see that one of the characteristic of the age of johnson is that uh, there were number of precursors of uh, the revival of romanticism or revival of the new traditions uh, or the initiation of romanticism in that very time period so he was not that flexible so dear students in today's lecture we have uh, covered uh, that 18th century literature is divided into two ages and the first one is age of pope and the second one is age of dr samuel johnson and we see that specifically in the age of johnson which is uh, in the later half of 18th century from 1745 to 1785 this very time period uh, is on uh, that time period when we see that uh, classicism was on its decline and there was a beginning of uh, the romantic spirit though actually or officially romantic age started in uh, 1798 with the publication of uh, lyrical ballads and uh, lyrical ballad is the important work from william wordsworth and uh, and st coleridge we see that uh, in the age of johnson there is uh, a noticeable revolt uh, in the field of poetry and uh, we see in the transition or revival or the beginning of experimentation in the last half of uh, 18th century dr samuel johnson he was a poet playwright essayist moralist literary critic biographer editor lexicographer pamphleteer a travel narrative writer translator all the fields prolific writer prolific personality and uh, he also established uh, a literary club and uh, the people who were there mem- as a member again uh, all of them were very prominent uh, and uh, uh, we see that uh, the writers were there statesmen were there the dramatists were there historians painters musicians naturalists philosophers and uh, politicians orientalists actors were all there 
Then we also covered uh, some of the important literary works. London, his poem, very important one in uh, Jovinel's uh, uh, style. Then we have uh, The Vanity of Human Wishes. Again, here he is imitating Jovinel. And uh, then we have uh, a play, Irene, that is in the Turkish uh, setting. And uh, it is a new classical tragedy. Commercially, we see that it was a success, but uh, literally it was a greatest failure. One of the greatest contributions of Dr. Samuel Johnson is his Dictionary of English Language, with uh, more than 40,000 definitions. He edited uh, the plays of William Shakespeare, and uh, the important thing is that uh, he added explanatory notes to the various passages uh, of uh, the William Shakespeare and uh, the special thing was that uh, he tried to keep those plays in the original language of the Shakespearean plays. So that is uh, one of the greatest contribution. So lives of the most eminent uh, English poets or uh, in short lives of the poets in which he published biographies of 52 poets and most of them were from 18th century. In style, he was uh, imitating classicals, but he was having a flexible attitude, and he showed that very thing in his writings. So that is all about uh, today's lecture. I hope that now you will be having a clear idea about uh, this very personality, Dr. Samuel Johnson, and uh, it will also help you in understanding of uh, the trends of uh, 18th century literature. Thank you very much for listening passionately. Allah Hafiz.